let's go for a book quest in Martin and say have books for a dollar. My spy came in and told me that this was so. How multimedia works. Hmm. I'm primarily looking for a book for my wife. She reads nonfiction usually, and uh, she likes inspirational stories. You know, she's uh, read recently read some stories that have to do with World War II. Uh, you know, the struggles and what people went through and how they made it to the other end. So I'm just kind of looking here. And uh, everything's kind of jumbled up, which is normal here. And I'm having a little bit of trouble finding things. No, some now one dollar, they're all a dollar. Uh, some days I'm really good at looking through jumbles, and other days I'm not. And this is one of the days, frankly, I'm just not good at it. It's kind of like a bit of sensory overload or something you know it's like you're looking at the titles you're kind of scanning it them. you don't want to you know read every one of them you're hoping you'll find something but I did see one book is that it right there no on game theory which looked like it was interesting to read from my point of view but Again, I have. I try not to buy too many books now because I, I've got so many books at home that I haven't read. So I'm kind of like I'm still on my hybrid book. So until I get that done, I'm not gonna try not to purchase another book. Uh, God's Fool, by Mark Sulka. But you can see they got a lot of stuff. Uh, Elizabeth Warren's in the sale bin already. Funny how books have lost their value over the years. Uh, how many people know where there's a used bookstore they could go to and buy a used book? As books have been de devalued because of electrical, electronic media, and frankly, probably people not just reading books as much. Maybe they're doing uh, audio books, or they're just not doing books at all. They're watching YouTube videos and things. I don't know. Uh, oh, here's survival game. Uh, that's how game theory works. And I, I've listened to that uh, idea before. Here's something about Catholics and Protestant states during a certain period, the 1570 plus, for about 30 years or so, I guess. That could be interesting, but again, those aren't books my wife would be interested in right now, I don't think, or no. So, it's funny because sometimes Martins will have tons of books. Next time you go in and look in a few days, it could be all gone. It's crazy. But their stock changes very quickly sometimes. Uh, they have some really good deals on things. People will come in and just buy it all up. So, we're going to be getting out of the book section shortly. And I like to look at the uh, food section. I like to look at tools. And I'm going to look at the electronic section too. Oh my goodness, look at that. I got my hand over the camera. How unprofessional of you, Michael. First I was going to take a cart. Then I thought to myself, wait a second. That's going to be more trouble than it's worth, so I get a basket instead. Something that is missing from Martin's, usually in this area in the front, they have whoopie pies for a buck. They don't have any at all, which is a big downer. I was going to get three, one for each of us, my wife, my daughter, everybody living at home. Uh, so... Here we are looking at some of the food items. Uh, candy. This would be the place to do Halloween shopping, I guess, for, 
for candy and things like that. It's amazing. Sometimes they'll have something that's extremely expensive, and they'll have it marked down to practically nothing. Other times, things are more in line with what they might be priced at a, another type of uh, discount place. But they've got all these canned products, and uh, I think the, the canned chicken is a really good value. Uh, I've got my canned hair, uh, $1.79. For 12 ounces and if we're looking at some of these I'm going to pick up a, one of these Alfredo things uh, something like that you can throw some chicken in it like the canned chicken and uh, turn it into a you know expand it kind of and turn it into more of a meal on its own or with something else but you know you kind of use that as a base here they've got the cans of chicken I don't even know what that is Coconut Volcanoes, it said. Hmm. Mac and cheese. Now, some items they have fairly consistently. Look at those big cans of cheese, number 10 size cans of cheese. <laughs> For you people that are need cheese for the end of the world, there it is. Okay, here's the canned chicken. I think this is a really neat idea to have. Of course, uh, you know, canned uh, meat lasts quite a long period of time. And it's also just really convenient sometimes to use. Let's see, here we get plenty of peanut butter. Some cookies. The uh, the chicken is a year and a half in date, so that's pretty good. Plus, normally canned meats can be used quite a bit beyond, like three to five years beyond their date. All you have to do is make sure the can isn't boat, you know, damaged in any way, or it isn't. Uh, oh, Bisquick mix, non no brand, eighty eight cents. I'm going to get that and try it. Uh, make sure the can hasn't like puffed out a little because of gases from bacteria. So canned meats usually can last quite a bit longer. But my primary aim is it's just really good. Here's a real bargain here. A quart of instant non-dry fat milk for only 88 cents. So you're buying a gallon for less than four bucks, which is basically the price of a gallon of milk. And nowadays, uh, powdered milk is way more expensive than regular milk. So in this case, it's about the same. So I, I grabbed four of them, and uh, I use them primarily in my bread machine uh, because it's, it's so convenient to do. Plus, you can use a timing function when you use powdered milk as opposed to liquid milk. You could set the timer for... 13 hours and have it, you know, ready for you in the morning or later in the day, whatever you want to do. Golfing stuff. All kinds of items here. Let's look over the other side. Oh, here's fishing things. Look at the uh, hemostats. For uh, removing things. This was a kit to bow fish with, but it looked like it had, well, it was opened and taped back together. Uh, so I don't know if all the parts would be there or not. Supposedly they would, but who knows? I want to know what's supposed to be in it. Oh, here's back at the tools. I left the tools, so I wanted to come back and just show you the selection of things they have. The tool section usually is quite well stocked. Like if you want to get a wrench, they're going to have it, or screwdrivers. A lot of the other items come and go really quickly. Sometimes you don't know what it's going to be. This nice employee here is telling me where the electronic items are because I'm looking for some headphones with a microphone for my iPad, which I'm actually using now for the voiceover of this uh, 
uh, video. Recording in stores now just isn't worth it because, you know, different areas will have music and you get the copyright strikes and all of these crazy things going on. So it's just better to avoid it and then, you know, uh, makes your videos conflict-free as far as YouTube algorithm computers are concerned. Here's the Vivitar Stereo headphones, earphones that I'm going to use, which I am using right now for a microphone. And uh, I just, $1.59, how can you go wrong for that? And of course, Vivitar isn't a real brand anymore. It's just a name that's put on things. They used to be an independent lens manufacturer back in the film days. And first their items were kind of cheap. Then they were kind of good, but they, the prices were going up. And then eventually they started having really good lenses that sometimes were better than the original equipment lenses. And then they disappeared. I assume that, uh, you know, digital and other market factors just did them in. Now we've got Bluetooth ones too, uh, water-resistant ones, different things. But I have some Bluetooth ones. I'm interested more in wired ones right now, which I'm going to get with the, the $1.59 one I purchased before. These stores are nice. You can, oh, I'm kind of looking at this power supply. It's got kind of an, I guess that's an older ca Apple cable in the back or something. I'm not quite sure. But we're looking. Some screen protectors. Uh, there we go, there's some more headphones. I'm going to be cheap and stick with the $1.59 ones instead of going out a price point or two. And now I must be looking at, re looking at one, yeah. Oh, here's a Tool Logic credit card tool that I am going to purchase and I'm going to actually open it up later on this video so you can take a look at it. This one's marked a couple dollars cheaper than the rest of them. So, uh, or I see one that's marked, see there, it's, it's $6.99 instead of $9.99. So I could save three bucks getting this one. Uh, so, like I say, we're going to have a video at the end that shows uh, uh, what the little tools are in this card. And uh, we'll have to do another video of actually trying to use it, trying to do something uh, worthwhile with it. Here, I'm just looking at more stuff here. Okay, I'm done with this section. Mm. All kinds of things. Some more headphones. Of course, you've got to be careful that you're getting the right ones that are compatible for your device. Oh, there I am. Pulling the trigger on the Vivitar stereo headphones. I'm going to get those. Into the cart they go. I was just looking for a picture of the end connector on it. Usually they'll have a picture, but it says it fits any uh, device with a 3.5 uh, millimeter uh, plug. So I know that's what the Apple iPad Mini 2 has. And a lot of phones have that too. And here I just went back to do, look at the end of the tool aisle because I kind of skipped that after I asked the person uh, where the electronics were. 
So now we're thinking about getting out of here. Rod hockey. You can notice there's like no one in the store this morning. I got there right when the store opened. Ah, it looks like there's an earthquake. Uh, you know, to avoid contact with people and everything as much as possible. Look at this. This is pretty neat. This is a uh, DVD player. And it's 12 bucks. I mean, I don't need one right now, but... You know, if you need one, 12 bucks is a pretty good price. Or get one to give to someone. Oh, I just thought I could have done that. Could have picked one up as a gift. One pot pasta. White cheddar. Annie's, I've never heard. What you'll notice, too, in some of these places, they'll have something, and it's just not a brand name you've ever heard of before. And uh, there are a lot of brand names out there most people have never heard of. Okay. Uh, time to check out. Oh, let's see. Let's take a last look. Oh, Alka Seltzer products. Cold and flu. I actually am going to pass on that since I, th I think I have some Alka Seltzer already at home. All right, now we're going to the car, and we're going to open that little logic tool up and just see what it's all about. Hi, Mike Kennedy with you, and what have we got? We bought this, the Logic Tool uh, Credit Card Companion. In other words, the idea that it's about the size of a credit card. It's fairly thick. This would be quite bulky to put in your wallet, but I guess you could, depending on how many other things you have in your wallet. Nine tools. So let's look at them. Right off, you can see this little compass. It'll give you general directions, and... Uh, if you're lost in the woods, uh, walking in a straight line is actually very difficult. People tend to work, walk in circles. If you're right-handed, you tend to walk in uh, counterclockwise, and if you're left-handed, you tend to walk in uh, clockwise directions, circles as I understand it. That's why when you go into a store, oftentimes the most important thing will be on the right, because they know people are going to see that first. And so we've got that little compass that, like I say, for really general direction can really still be helpful. It's funny, I've got this dragonfly buzzing in my car. He comes up and he, he just hovers next to the window here. We got a little 8x uh, magnifier. Uh, I don't know, maybe that would be good for removing splinters. It does have these types of tweezers here. That's one of the tools. Uh, I don't know how effective that would be. It's not pointed. Maybe you could remove a splinter with that. I'm not quite sure about that. I would say the jury would be out on that. I'm not going to get a splinter just to try it. Uh, we have a little knife here. The, the problem with all these things is holding them when they're this small. But I could see, you know, you could... Uh, you could cut something with this. You could cut, uh, you know, a strap or different things like that. Uh, so you can do something useful with a knife that small. Then we've got this other. And these things do kind of lock in. This is a little tab you press when you're pulling it out, and that helps it come out. You get this kind of small bottle opener, can opener. And then on the end here is a little flat screwdriver. And then there's another little one there. So, uh, or is that supposed to be a pry bar? 
the things they claim things are sometimes is kind of funny. Tweezers too thick, ultra light, flat screwdriver. Combination can bottle opener all. All? I don't see an all on there. Unless they're saying that is. I, I, I don't get that. Maybe you could explain that to me, people. I mean, if you can't figure out what the, how you could use the thing that's on one of these, then it probably isn't that valuable if you can't grasp what it is right off. Then that snaps in positively. Then on the, the back, we see a three inch uh, measurement for uh, inches and a, oh, uh, what is this saying here for a six centimeter uh, ruler also. So there you go. That's the credit card companion tool logic. This does seem to be made a little better. I've had these in the past and I've always been disappointed because it's like, you know, if you if you use the things a couple of times, they, they no longer stay in it. So uh, all of a sudden you've got it, say you put it in your pack or something, then you pull it out and you actually want to use something on it, the piece is missing. It's fallen off, it's in your pack, it's somewhere, it's gone, it's lost, whatever. So anyway, there's it. Uh, the credit card companion to a logic u.s patent u.s patent but let's see where it's made again as always oh made in taiwan great made in a free country we're we're now trying to stay away from uh buying things in uh, communist dictatorships or other dictatorships so uh and you know of course we're looking for american made things too but there we go, to a logic. We'll actually experiment with this and try some of the things out. Uh, you know, uh, maybe cut some paracord with this. Uh, maybe try to open a can with that little, that's gonna be frustrating, I think, trying to open a can. But we can give it a try, bye.